Um, so that transform is actually kind of expensive because it has two nested loops. So this is a faster way to do it. It's an algorithm called the fast Fourier transform. And I won't really cover it except that just to say it's the standard way of doing Fourier transform. It's based on the idea of dividing the problem into two recursively and computing the transform of each. So that reduces the cost from m squared, where m is the number of samples, to m log m. So quite a savings it, it can be. And MATLAB has a function to do that called FFT for fast Fourier transform. Some important Fourier transform pairs. We've already seen the rectangle uh, transforms to a sink. Um, a cosine transforms to two impulses. A sine transforms to two impulses, but in the imaginary domain. And a Gaussian transforms to a Gaussian. So um, this is symmetrical. So either of these can be the spatial function, and the other can be the frequency. So you can go either way. An impulse um, transforms to a constant. You can see that just by plugging in the impulse into the Fourier transform definition, um, as well as a shifted impulse transforms into a complex number. Finally, the, um, we're going to see the use of, this is kind of handy, the function that's a series of impulses, or a comb function, because it looks like a comb. Um, it's a summation of impulses separated at uh, delta x. So that transforms to a comb function at uh, separated by intervals of uh, 1 over delta x. So the, the wider the spacing gets, the narrower the spacing is. And uh, just showing the proof here, uh, I won't go into that. Uh, finally, the, uh, the convolution theorem um, is very important. It says that convolution in one domain is equivalent to multiplication in the other domain. So if I have a filter, let's say small h, x, y, convolved with an image f of x, y, that has a Fourier pair of the transform of the filter h of x, y, big H, multiplied point by point times the transform of the image, capital F of UV. And you can go the other way. A, tran a convolution in the frequency domain is equivalent to point-by-point -point multiplication in the spatial domain. Correlation um, turns out to be the same uh, theorem, except we put a complex conjugate on one of them. And this shows the proof of that um, in one dimension, just plugging the definition of a convolution into the definition of a Fourier transform. And we get um, that the result is just the product of h of u times f of u. So finally, I want to uh, talk about sampling and aliasing, now that we have all this background on the Fourier transform. So this is important in image processing um, because you know we're working with digital images, so we're sampling images. We're sampling continuous images. And we also resize images. We shrink images and expand them. So what we'll, we'll see is that we can reconstruct the image exactly from the samples if the samples are dense enough. And what that means is from the sampling theorem, uh, which says that the sampling rate must be more than twice the maximum frequency of the image. If you don't sample um, at that rate, if the sampling rate is lower, then you can get errors in the reconstructed image uh, called aliasing. So let's show that in, in one dimension. So let's say we have a continuous function. Let's say this is a, an image, just a slice through an image. And we're, we want to convert it to digital form by sampling. We can think of that, doing that, um, by multiplying by a comb function. So recall that a comb function is a series of impulses like this, separated at uh, delta t. So multiplying this times the uh, continuous function basically just sifts out or picks off the values of f at these points. So I get a series of samples like this. 
Okay, so what is that? What have we actually done in the frequency domain? Um, when we multiplied those two value, those two functions, f and the and the comb function together, that was equivalent to convolving their transforms in the frequency domain. So, what are the transforms? Um, the transform of the comb function is a sum of impulses. So, if I plug that into uh, the definition of the Fourier transform, what I get is that um, the result is um, sums of the original of, of my image transform f, but shifted by n over delta t. So this is uh, copies, I have infinite number of copies of the original image transform shifted by intervals of 1 over delta t. So pictorially it looks like this. Here's my sampling function, its transform, which is a series of impulses separated at 1 over um, delta x. Here's my uh, transform of my original image. Let's say it's it's sitting near the origin here and it falls to zero after a certain point. Convolving these two um, generates periodic copies of the uh, original image transform. So you can think of also as just sliding this function past all these impulses and you just get back the function itself. Okay, so this is what we have effectively after we have a bunch of samples of our image. Now, if, if I want to reconstruct the original continuous image, I, I can do that if I just isolate the center portion here and get rid of all these copies. I can do that by multiplying a rectangle function that's 0 everywhere out here and a 1 over here. And as we'll see a little bit later, this is an ideal low-pass filter because it, it passes without change anything that has low frequencies and zeroes out anything that has high frequencies. So multiplying this times this, uh, we get zero out all our copies and we just get back the original uh, function, the original transform of the image. Okay, so how do you reconstruct the uh, image from the samples? Um, so recall that um, this is what we had. We had for our sampled function, it, it had a transform that looked like this, and the equivalent to that was the set of samples in the spatial domain. Then we multiplied by the ideal low pass filter, which its transform looks like that. And recall its Fourier pair is a sync function in the spatial domain, which looks like that. So multiplying these two point by point to, to reconstruct the original is equivalent to convolving the sync function with our set of samples. So if we were to do that in the spatial domain with convolution, we would get back our original image. Or, you know, we could have gone this way too. We could have just done an inverse Fourier transform on this to get our original function back. All right, so now we can address what happens if you don't sample uh, at a high enough rate. So this is our uh, sampling function. Now let's say our image transform um, didn't go to zero so quickly. Uh, in fact, it was non-zero even past the halfway point here of 1 over 2 delta x. So this uh, will cause problems when we reconstruct. So when we um, convolve the um, transform with our sampling function, namely we're sampling, effectively what we've done is generate a function with this transform. And as you can see, um, we have a summation um, of before we had these, these uh, copies that were isolated, but now they're adding together at the points where they overlap. 
So that's a problem because we, when we go try to reconstruct it by multiplying by the ideal low pass filter, we don't get back the original. We get back in this area where they overlapped, um, we get back an additional uh, portion that's uh, not accurate. Here's a simple example of aliasing of a one-dimensional function. Um, we have a, um, a sine wave that we've sampled at these black dots, but um, when we reconstruct that, we would, we would reconstruct a sine wave of much lower frequency. So that's something that wasn't there in the original. We would see some low frequencies that were not there in the original. In summary, any periodic function can be expressed as a sum of sines and cosines of different frequencies, each multiplied by a different coefficient. The Fourier transform expresses this concisely using complex numbers. Some questions. What is the impulse function? What is the convolution theorem? And what is aliasing?